Now we come to our latest, uh, last speaker, I'm sorry. Uh, his name is Michael Gildenal. He comes from the Danish Museum of Science and Technology. Uh, the theme for this year's conference is uh, old questions, new answers, and I think I'll talk about that subject relating to uh, putting new media platforms into museums' education. I think for a lot of your museums, you have traditions for using written tasks and assignments for students, and what we have been doing now at the Museum of Science and Technology in Denmark, that we have made them into uh, new media. And we are very glad that we are actually the first museum in Denmark to have made an app for smartphones, which make me like, could you please take your right hand and take it down to your right pocket? Even though who's uh, wearing trousers, maybe the, the women could have it in the back because your most beloved device, I suppose everybody has one. Could you please show me your cell phone? Yes, thank you. Everybody has one. And even I've seen a lot of people, they, they're even having a tablets like iPads and this nowadays. At our museum, when we investigated this, almost everybody at the school groups, they had an, uh, a smartphone or at least a mobile phone. And uh, almost 50% of them was uh, these new smartphones, which in fact is uh, a small computer. Um, <clears throat> We, we decided that we have to get use of those. And today, if you go on to the App Store for iTunes, and you go Google Museum, more than hundreds of apps will show up. And you can, for instance, you can, you can learn about dinosaurs from the American Historical Museum. The MoMA has a lot of apps. You can uh, go to the Dutch Graphic Design Museum. In London, you can learn a lot about the streets in London. And even the Tate Modern, they have made a very nice app where you can play with, with, uh, with paintings as it was cards. It's very nice. Uh, at the Danish Museum, just uh, last year, before Christmas, we launched our, lab, our app. And the subject is the energy crisis in 1973, which is now a part of the Danish curriculum. And uh, as you know, in 1973, a war broke out in the Middle East. The Israel and its neighboring Arab, Arabic countries were in, uh, in war, and we were met in Europe and in the Western world with an, an embargo, uh, and we have a shortage on oil. So we had to do something new. <clears throat> and um, we have to think different. And uh, for instance, in Denmark, we were not allowed to drive cars on Sundays. All the government buildings, the temperature was lower to 18 degrees. And suddenly we had to start to think in a new way. We had to, uh, to think about alternative means of producing uh, electricity. We started a big windmill production in Denmark and actually today the Danish company Wester is one of the biggest windmill uh, industrial in, in, in the world. And we started to shorten down our use of fuel for, uh, fuels. But um, <clears throat> Today, even today, two years ago, we had the big summit in Copenhagen concerning the climate. No result was made. But every children in Denmark, and I'm sure in the rest of the world, are very concerned what will happen to the world in the future. And they, uh, they, they know about pollution, carbon dioxide, and the global warming, and they want to do something. So what we are doing in our app is we go back 100 years because actually at the turn of the century when the cars was invited, nobody said that the, the car on gasoline fuel would be, the future, would be the future. In fact, we have a great article in Denmark saying that the electrical car would be the future. Cars going on gasoline will in the future only be at museums. But that, 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 that didn't happen. The electrical car was only uh, used in golf courses when people were playing golf, I suppose. But in the 80s in Denmark, we started to, to make a production of electrical cars. And uh, we got a lot of money in to make an uh, electrical car uh, industry. And uh, we had this first uh, car called the Hope Whisper, which was presented in Copenhagen. 
and the entire world press was invited to this, to this presentation. But for some reason, it wasn't really function. And the engineer, he, was, uh, he had to work on the car to make it drive in the morning. So all night he was preparing the car and he got tired. And in the end, he forgot to, try to take the handbrake of the car. So the next day, when he had to present it and pull off the carpet from the car, it went down from the platform and smashed totally into the barriers of the presentation place. And that picture was the one going all around the world, not that one, it's a new one, Megan. And it was a total failure because everybody saw it. it was really ridiculous. What we do now is we go back. What would have happened if he maybe had had a cup of coffee in the evening, not have been so tired? Maybe today Denmark could have been the equivalent of Detroit in the United States and we would have a big electrical car production. So, <clears throat> the point is, we go back in time. And in our app at the museum, we use it for school groups and they're supposed in groups going around the museum and have to take decisions among different kinds of objects at the museum. Electrical cars, steam cars, uh, nuclear power plants, and all this kind of stuff to make electrical power. Even we have a great Danish inventor called Ellehammer, who is in, the, in Europe may, maybe most famous that he was the first one to make an airplane. We say in Denmark he was the first in Europe. I think we are the only place in the world who says he is the first in Europe, but it's been a, another discussion. But he was a great inventor, and he made, uh, he made a lot of inventions besides the airplanes. But one of his concerns was how to produce energy to the, reduce the use of coal. And this was already in the 30s, before the Second World War. And one of the things he did was to build a windmill in his garden, and he rebuilt his car to be driven from uh, electricity made from his own windmill. Have you heard about that before? Um, and this is actually probably some of the future. Um, yes. He also thought that a third of Denmark should be, be planted with potatoes and you could make it into beer ethanol already in the 30s. The point of this app is not to tell only about the energy crisis in 1973. The main concern this app does is to think about the historical consciousness of the children. They go back in history and they change history by deciding to do something else. Maybe we start to produce electrical cars at the turn of the century. Maybe we um, already in the 40s we start to produce bioethanol for the cars. And they have to do a lot of different, uh, they have to decide which direction the, the society will go into. And in the end, either they have made a world delightful or maybe they have made it even worse. But the point here is that they have to take action. They have to, to learn that the making of history is the decision of man. Thank you.